Every night, the average human sleeps for around eight hours. That's one third of your life spent asleep. In fact, every animal on Earth sleeps to a certain extent. So for the entire animal kingdom to have evolved to spend prolonged periods of time unconscious, where they are unable to find food, reproduce, or even protect themselves from predators, it must have a pretty important role to play in keeping us alive. Have you ever wondered why sleep is so important? Or even what's happening to your brain and body while sleeping? Well, sleep might just be one of the most productive things you ever do. And I'll attempt to explain why based on the current evidence and theories from sleep researchers. First off, let's have a look at the process of falling asleep. There are two factors influencing the brain that make us feel tired and allow us to transition from being awake to sleeping. The first factor is the circadian rhythm, sometimes referred to by sleep scientists as process C. The second factor is sleep pressure, also referred to as process S. The circadian rhythm is an internal biological clock that keeps your body running on a 24 hour cycle. It allows you to feel tired towards the end of the day and more alert at the start and middle of the following day. This process is governed by two specialized regions of the brain called the suprachiasmatic nucleus and the pineal gland. The suprachiasmatic nucleus will stimulate the pineal gland to release melatonin which is a hormone that will bind to receptors all over the body and make you feel tired. The circadian rhythm will cause a rise in melatonin towards the end of the day when most people go to sleep. And by the morning, it will be significantly reduced. If you lived in a dark room with no external environmental influences, your circadian rhythm would actually run over a period of 24 and a half hours. However, environmental stimuli such as sunlight, keep this biological clock cycling over a 24 hour period. The circadian rhythm is also responsible for an unpleasant phenomenon that you may have experienced before, jet lag. Since the invention of the jet engine in the early 1900s, humans have had the ability to travel into different time zones faster than our biological clocks can keep up with. Having your circadian rhythm out of sync with the time zone you're in means that your melatonin levels won't peak at the same time as people who are accustomed to that time zone. This means that you won't be able to fall asleep at the socially normal time. Imagine you fly from the UK to Australia, a time difference of 9 hours. It may be 10pm where you land, and everyone is starting to settle into their night of slumber. However, your circadian rhythm is acting as if it's 1pm and so your melatonin won't peak for another few hours, making it very difficult to fall asleep. The circadian rhythm does of course adjust over time, helped by environmental stimuli such as sunlight, food and social activities. The second factor to help you fall asleep is sleep pressure, which refers to the build-up of a chemical called adenosine in your brain. From the moment you wake up in the morning, the concentration of adenosine in your brain is rising. When the concentration of adenosine is high enough, you will feel the irresistible urge to fall asleep. However, if out of sync with the circadian rhythm, for example with jet lag, or after working night shifts, you may still find it difficult to actually fall asleep. You might have experienced this frustrating sensation before, where no matter how tired you feel, you can't seem to make that transition from being awake to sleeping. Now, imagine if we discovered a wonder drug that could inhibit the effect of adenosine, therefore preventing the gradual increase in tiredness that we all experience throughout the day. Well, we already have, and globally, it's the most popular psychoactive substance we consume. Caffeine. Caffeine will competitively bind to the same receptors as adenosine, effectively preventing adenosine from doing its job of making you feel tired. This is fantastic whilst it lasts. However, caffeine has a half-life of six hours, meaning that six hours after you drink that coffee, only half the amount of caffeine you consumed remains active in your body. During this time, adenosine is still building up in your brain, but it's just not able to bind to its receptors. This means that when the caffeine is eventually excreted from your body, all the adenosine that has been accumulating is suddenly able to bind the now free receptors in your brain creating a sudden onset of tiredness. 
This is why we experience a slump in energy levels a few hours after having a caffeinated drink. So, now that you're asleep, what's actually happening to your body and brain? Well, different processes are happening depending on the stage of sleep you're in. Sleep can be categorised into two main stages. Non-rapid eye movement sleep, which can be further subdivided into NREM stages 1, 2 and 3 and rapid eye movement sleep. Throughout the night, your brain will cycle between these sleep stages in a 90 minute loop. This will repeat over and over until you wake up. If you were to perform an EEG, which is where electrodes are attached to a person's head and the electrical activity of the brain is recorded, you would be able to tell which of these two sleep stages someone is in based on the patterns of electrical activity being produced by the brain. NREM sleep produces high amplitude, low frequency waves called delta waves, which slowly spread from the front of the brain to the back, repeating over and over throughout this stage. Delta waves occur while you're in your deepest stages of sleep. REM sleep, however, produces beta waves, which are much higher frequency. Interestingly, the waves produced in REM sleep are identical to those when a person is awake. For this reason, REM sleep is also referred to as paradoxical sleep. REM sleep received its name from the fact that, well, your eyes move rapidly. If you were to open someone's eyelids in REM sleep, you'd be able to see this. REM sleep is also when your most vivid dreaming occurs. The function of dreaming isn't clear, but there are many theories, including for memory consolidation, maturation of the structure of the brain, and more psychoanalytical theories, such as developing a sense of identity or expressing desires. Because REM sleep involves a lot of brain activity and dreaming, evolution has solved the problem of us accidentally acting out our dreams and causing harm to ourselves. During REM sleep, your body is in atonia, which means all the voluntary muscles in your body are paralysed. This keeps you safe whilst your brain is unaware of your real surroundings. In REM sleep, your body also has impaired homeostasis, which results in an irregular heart rate, breathing rate and blood pressure, and also an inability to regulate your body temperature effectively. The function of REM sleep is to connect memories in new ways and organise them into a useful structure. These connections are often bizarre, but result in increased creativity. This is why people often feel more creative after a good night's sleep. For example, a writer no longer has writer's block, or a musician may have a sudden awareness of a new musical melody. REM sleep is also important for regulating our emotions. This makes sense given the amount of evidence that supports the link between sleep deprivation and mental illness, which we'll come on to shortly. NREM sleep can be further subdivided into stages 1, 2 and 3 with stage 3 being the deepest stage of sleep you will enter. Throughout sleep cycles, you will start in stage 1, which is the lightest form of sleep. Here, you may experience myoclonic jerks, which are sudden, involuntary muscle contractions, where your body or limbs might jolt without you expecting it. You will then move into stage 2 NREM sleep. For those of you that grind your teeth, also known as bruxism, this is where it will happen. Eventually, you'll fall into stage 3 NREM, also known as deep sleep, which is linked to long-term memory consolidation, where memories are transferred from their temporary storage in the hippocampus to their permanent residency in the cortex of the brain. The stages of sleep can be visualised in a hypnogram, which shows how an individual will go through all the sleep stages in 90-minute cycles. However, you can notice how with each cycle, the length of time you spend in REM sleep increases. There's currently no clear evidence as to why this happens. With all the complexity that's involved with sleep, and the obvious risks associated with spending so much of our lives unconscious, you won't be wrong for thinking that it must have a pretty important role. Well, the more sleep researchers try to ask the question, why do we sleep? the more they are realising that there is not any system in the human body that isn't negatively impacted by a lack of sleep. In fact, the general consensus is that the more inadequate an individual person's sleep is, 
the shorter their lifespan. More specifically, looking at the effects of poor sleep on the brain, research has identified a link between poor sleep and Alzheimer's disease. Receiving inadequate sleep can contribute to a buildup of amyloid plaques in the brain, which are a key part of the disease process. Cruelly, having Alzheimer's disease also negatively impacts your ability to sleep, which creates a dangerous feedback loop which progresses someone towards more advanced Alzheimer's. Poor sleep is also linked with an increased risk of depression, strokes and psychosis. An individual who receives inadequate sleep is also at a greater risk of becoming obese. The stomach and small bowel produce two hormones that help regulate the feeling of hunger. These hormones are ghrelin, which stimulates hunger, and leptin, which will make you feel full. In a healthy individual, these hormones will be produced at the correct volume to help maintain a healthy body weight. However, in sleep-deprived individuals, these hormones are out of balance with your metabolism, and the body will secrete excessive amounts of ghrelin and inefficient amounts of leptin. This will lead to strong signals of hunger in the brain and result in overeating. Having inadequate sleep for prolonged periods of time also increases your risk of heart disease. More specifically, it can increase your risk of having a myocardial infarction, also known as a heart attack. This happens when the blood flow through the coronary arteries that supply nutrients to your heart muscle becomes reduced. Poor sleep quality can also cause hypertension or high blood pressure. Sleep deprived individuals have a chronically stimulated sympathetic nervous system, which is essentially your fight or flight response. Over short periods of time, the sympathetic nervous system plays a vital role in survival. However, when activated for prolonged periods of time, the blood pressure will remain elevated, which causes a range of other problems from atherosclerosis of blood vessels to kidney damage. There's also a strong link between inadequate sleep and the development of type 2 diabetes. Lack of sleep will reduce the amount of insulin produced from the pancreas and also reduce the body's ability to react to insulin. This will result in high blood sugar levels. If you're interested in learning more about sleep, its importance and its relevance to our modern day lifestyles, I'd highly recommend reading this book by Matthew Walker, Why We Sleep. I've put a link to it in the description. I'd hugely appreciate it if you'd consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.